Little moose action in the yard this morning. Didn't get great video, but right out, uh, right out the living room towards the ocean. Howdy, folks. Jamie with Dirty North. Just got done work. Figured to work in the shop. I have myself a PBR. And uh, I know you're probably getting tired of hammers, but I got a bunch to work on, and that's what I do in my free time at night. It's cold, windy, snowy, blowing out, hard to film stuff outside and uh, at work. That's pretty much what I've been doing. Those of you who got channels know that the microphones freeze up, your phones freeze up. Um, I don't get too big into the production aspect of it. Not much on computers and stuff like that. So I use my phone and it's just kind of a pain in the ass to film outside. So we're working in the shop. If you watched my last video, I discussed uh, a little bit of the Plum brand, and we, we redid this ball peen. And I was discussing the, the colors that they use, and I had to run to the hardware store in the city today for work. So I checked out the pawn shops while I was there, and I bought this. It's all, I don't know, somebody's... Rat terrier or something. Some little yappy dog probably chewed on the end of this. Hard to say. Maybe they used it to pry bar. Uh, meth head took his last tooth out on it. Who knows? But it's a plum. Got the, the permabond end on it like I was discussing. Came out in like 1958. And this style of hammer. Wine color up here. Rubber handle. Uh, fiberglass. Plum came started making these in 1958. This one isn't quite that old. I know it's an older one. It's made in the USA. It's stamped on it. But it uh, has a warning label. And I I don't know when they started doing them. I'd say probably in the 70s and 80s. But I had a hammer just like this when I was a when I was a kid. Like I said, it's it's beat up and some chips taken out of it. These fiberglass, uh, you ever get fiberglass in your hand? That's no fun. And the handle on it's dry rotted, but uh I got that to put a new handle on eventually, and we'll do it that same uh, black cherry color like we did on this little plum. Uh, also in the junk bucket, this little guy. And I'm not an expert on hammers by no means. If some of you guys know more than me on this, uh, let me know. I want to clean up. I don't think there'd be a stamp on it, but I am 90% sure that this is a round face rivet hammer. And the only time I think these get used uh, currently is uh, jewelers. Handmade jewelry, uh, copper jewelry, they'll, uh, they'll use this little guy. This is actually a good size one for what it's made for. And uh, when we redo this, I'll kind of show you how it's supposed to be used. And... Uh, We'll go over some of these different peening hammers and how they're supposed to be used. But today I'm just uh, going to work on that uh, brass head that I got. We got the old handle from that plum. And we got that chunk of the snap on. All mushroomed over. I did clean it up a little bit to get at that stamp. And I cleaned up the other end. We're going to hopefully make the whole thing look like that. But, uh... I'm going to put this, uh, you could use a file on this, file it down, sand it down. Um, I'm going to cheat, use the, use the belt sander over here. And uh, same, same with this, we're going to whittle this down on the belt sander too. Make it fit that round eye. And what I could do is I, I could uh, put the file in there and turn that oval. But it's got some, I don't know if you can see that in there, it's got some splines in there. I think we can make that fit tight enough. We won't have to worry about it swiveling on us. What we can also do is uh, make like a little saddle in here to fit some of it. These weren't meant for big swings. It's more like a dead blow hammer. 
and what you would use a uh, brass for. Now they got plastics and uh, vinyls and stuff like that. But uh, back in the day, you'd use this metal on metal, hitting shafts out, uh, crank shafts, uh, gun gun barrels, also uh, grain elevators, uh, sawmills with sawdust. Anywhere you don't want metal on metal contact, that you'd get a spark and cause an explosion. Flour mills, stuff like that, you'd use brass. But uh, I think we'll get that that in there cleaned up really nice. Look at that. Let's see if we make the whole thing look like that. Let's get to it. I drank this before I, uh, I learned don't leave open beer in the, in the sawdust shop. That first drink is, it's a little thick. Get that extra fiber though, huh? All right, let's get her done. Just cleaning this brass up a little bit with some double aught steel wool. Steel wool comes in handy for pretty much everything when you're working with, uh, especially soft metals, it puts a nice shine on it where uh, your sandpaper is going to leave scratches. Also on the handles, you can give them a nice rub down with that. I put a little gloss on them actually, a little light polish if you'd like. Just watch out. Uh, this stuff is super flammable. Keep it away from that torch. Especially when you're drinking. I'm just kidding. I only had... This was just a... Uh, it's probably a two-beer project from start to finish, but I had just the one. PBR. We fixed that uh, mushrooming. Anytime you have mushrooming on any hammer, clean that up. It's unsafe. Uh, chips fall off. Come back, hit you, and take your eye out, kid. You know the deal. Also, uh, chamfer these edges all the time. 
You don't want want it anytime that's a sharp edge, it's gonna roll over and leave them pieces. Put it on a we'll cut that handle down. It's a little stubby, but like I said, these aren't meant for big swings. This cost is absolutely nothing. Free head, reused handle. Brass hammers, lead hammers, wood mallets. Kind of going the way of the dodo. Not a lot of homeowners, anyways, are using them. You might have a plastic, vinyl type tipped hammer in your toolbox. And them, them will become mushroom too. You still got to touch them up and sand them. But not bad for a little free project. I didn't go crazy, so I don't know if you see that or not. You still see the Snap-on BH24 model. Just a nice little user. Like I said, anytime you're uh, hitting, you don't want metal on metal. That's when chips form. Break stuff off. If you're hitting a, another shaft, bust a shaft, crank shaft, bearings, anything like that. Brass hammer. Other than that, I got some more projects, like I said, I'll be working on. Got a lot of stuff coming up. The warm weather months will be hitting hitting the chainsaw is hard getting wood cut. I like to stay at least a year ahead of my wood. I've um, got a trip to Wisconsin planned in April again. I gotta do some uh medical tests, my year checkup. Uh, subscriber count grew quick. I just checked I was over 250. That was a quick 50. Um thanks to all the new subscribers. You see some new ones down in the comments, uh Check out their channels, see if it's for you, especially the lower sub counts, try to get, I don't know everyone wants to get that thousand sub mark, help them out if you can, watch three to five minutes of their videos, hit that thumbs up, same on mine, I'll do the same on yours, we'll catch you on the next one, snap on brass hammer, BH24, take her easy.